What if I told you that it's natural to look at the floor sometimes when you're dribbling? That it's best to look past your defender? That we should be taking mental pictures as we navigate the floor? This is all stuff we don't talk about enough in basketball, but can make a huge difference. Now, of course, none of this was done with eye tracking technology or anything special. It really just came from hours of me watching players and where they're looking with their eyes. So it's not perfect, but it could be a start and it could provide you guys with some practical applications. Let's check it out. So first we've got to learn a little bit about how we see as humans in general. Our central vision, which is directly where we're looking, gives us more clarity. We see all the little details in something when we're looking directly at it. On the other hand, our peripheral vision is more sensitive to movement. Like Steph right here reading LeBron's momentum out of his peripheral. So in terms of basketball, this can be huge for us. We want our central vision focused on something where we need to pick up the smallest of details like the help defense and our teammates. And our peripheral vision many times simply isn't detailed enough for us to see and confirm if teammates are open, to read patterns in the defense, etc. So it's hard to read these detailed components of the second layer of defense if you're looking at it out of your peripheral vision. On the other side of that, you don't necessarily need to see all the details of your initial defender. You creating space from them is more reliant on their momentum, which is the specialty of the peripheral vision, seeing movement. Like right here, Bledsoe doesn't even gaze at him directly the entire move. Now, another thing that you'll notice is that you'll see players gaze downwards at times. Why? We get told all the time, don't look at the ground, look up. So my theory is that this is to keep a centered periphery for a moment in a tight space. If we're looking up with no one in front of us and nothing to lock in on, we're seeing the stands or the wall behind the basket or something 10, 15 feet past the baseline. And this can throw off the depth of our vision. It's like shooting in a high school gym with a wall directly behind the backboard and then walking into an arena, your shot's gonna be thrown off and many, many players have felt this feeling. So then this brings up the question, why don't we just look at something, the next layer in the defense? The way I see it, unless there's someone directly in front of us, if we look left, the right side of our field of vision is gonna be hindered. If we look right, the left side is gonna be hindered. So we can't negate either side if we wanna see the whole floor. So where's the only place if we wanna center that periphery and still see everything around the court? Is the ground a few feet ahead of us? Now, of course, I'm not saying to lock in on this, but after a move or as you're entering that second line, it may be good to see everything by locking in on that floor right ahead of you. This isn't something you're gonna think about, but if you see players doing it as a coach or a trainer or even a teammate, don't try to coach them out of it. Like right here, he can read one, two, and three defenders despite many people seeing this and telling him to look up. We often forget how wide our field of vision is. And how does Russ drop this dime if he didn't even look in that direction? Hopefully you're able to answer that question by now. Plus it gives us a spot where we can lock in on as we have momentum to the basket. When we're able to kind of keep our gaze fixed as we're driving and not keep moving our eyes around, we're able to get more information from our periphery. Try this really quick, pause the video and look around really rapidly with your eyes. Now stare at something and see how much better you can perceive from your peripheral vision. It's a lot easier to take stuff from our visual field when we're locked in on something and we're not constantly moving our eyes around. And then other times we don't want to be looking straight at the defender because we want to use them to sell our moves. So for example, looking towards the screen to sell that you're going over it and then rejecting back. This can be applied on crossover, shot fakes, a ton of different moves. Use your eyes strategically in how you sell moves. Another thing I really wanna to touch on is that great finishers find and lock in on that rim early. So what this is doing is helping them read those demands that the defense gives them. So they're locked in on the rim, they're seeing how they need to finish, and they're also able to see out of their periphery see the help defense shot blockers whatever it may be now many times if there's a single shot blocker you'll see them gaze directly at them as they're entering the paint now this is important because that split second helps them gather information about what they're going to do then as they go up they use their periphery to see everything else so that they're not distracted and they can lock in on the rim Hopefully I explained that one well enough. Another way to think about it is this. After they pass that first layer and enter the second layer of defense, they'll many times use their periphery to see everything. And like we talked about, their eyes may be down as they're doing this. They look up and take a quick glance at any relevant defender that may be trying to block their shot. Then they lock in on the rim. And when they lock in, I mean they lock in. Like D-Rose here, he's using his peripheral vision to anticipate contact, but the best finishers keep that intense gaze on the rim. Because we need all those little details from our central vision 
decision to convert it at the rim. Also, another thing that many coaches may hate me for is that there are times that we can look at the ball as we dribble. Even players like Kyrie will glance at the ball as they wrap it behind the back. As long as you have a picture of where defenders are and you're aware of your surroundings, it shouldn't hurt you if you're able to relock in on the court or the rim right after. Now, when we're talking about the open court, this is a little bit different. This is where scanning the entire court comes into play. And we want to be looking around consistently. When we're not actively engaging a defender, so there's not a defender right in front of us that we're trying to get by, most times we want to be looking around and picking up on any relevant information we see. This is seen a lot in soccer, so it makes sense because this is a similar situation. We're basically painting a moving picture in our minds every second and every time we move our eyes, which helps us pick up patterns and read the play a step or two ahead of the defense. Now, regardless of what you think about any of these, we have to be able to train our eyes to be constantly moving and picking up new pieces of information around the court. Like Kyrie here, he glances up at the clock to read the time, then he looks downhill to get a picture of what the help defense is like. He then fixates on the ground to read Clay's momentum out of his peripheral vision. Then as he swings over, he looks downhill again to see if the help will step over. Then he finds the rim five spots in less than two seconds. And again, you're not gonna be thinking about this stuff as you play for the most part. And the best way to train this is putting yourself in live situations where you're forced to do this subconsciously. It's hard to replicate this without much defense, which is why I see so many young or inexperienced players fixating on the man in front of them and forgetting everything else behind that. They just haven't figured it out yet. So a few practical applications. I know that was a lot, but I'll give you guys a few takeaways from this. Number one, look past your initial defender more, or at least work on it. You'll see the second and third layers of the court a lot better. And plus you don't really need to be looking at your initial defender in the first place anyways. Number two, lock in on that rim early. This is something that we can train for in workouts. Pretty simple, have yourself facing away from the basket or your eyes on something else as you go up to finish and learn to transition your gaze from somewhere else to the rim as quickly as possible and as early as possible. Number three, scan the floor more in transition. Keep your head on a swivel. This is a very cliche one, but it's facts. It should be a constant scan, taking mental pictures of the floor. And lastly, just train in live situations. I know this sucks for a lot of people who can't train with others that much, but you're never, ever, ever gonna train all of this when you're playing against air defense and your eyes aren't really required to be so active. So do your best to find people to play basketball. And whether this has any practical applications or not, I think it does. I think it's kind of cool to consider for everyone looking deeper in the game. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at By Any Means Basketball for a lot more. Stay tuned.